All right, several of you have messaged me about some of the limitations with your Databricks Free Edition, and some of you are wrong about those limitations. So today I am going to walk you through step-by-step -step from A to Z, setting up your Databricks Free Edition environment. All right, so here it is, databricks.com slash learn slash free edition. So here's where you go. This is the starting page. Click on sign up for free edition. It's going to prompt you for a username. I like to sign in with Google just because it makes it a little bit easier. It's a free edition. You're not probably going to be storing anything, you know, secure, private here. We're going to sign up with Google. And I'm going to use this account because I have a business free account already set up. So to show you from scratch, we're going to do that. So name, name your account. We'll name our account, Gamble Data. And I'm located in the United States and it's going to spin for a second, but it'll come up. It takes a few moments to set everything up, launching the workspace. It's going to take you to, to the workspace. Like it says in a few seconds, there's no credit card required. There's no charges here. It is all completely free. Gives you a great environment to learn from. As you see, didn't take long at all. All right. We have a bunch of stuff down the left-hand side here. As you get into Databricks, you'll learn more and more about this. Key things are workspace, your recents. I really spend a lot of my time on recent because it has the recent notebooks that I have been in your catalog. It comes set up with a workspace and a system catalog. We have various data sets in here, billing, compute, lake flow, ML flow, access. These are just system database systems databases. Now you have some samples already set up here, which is great. You have the bakehouse data set, your New York city taxi trips data set. That's something you may be familiar with. And this TPCH data set that has some customer and part information in it. So already has some great data sets to use in here, but you can add more and I would encourage you to set things up just like you would in your organization. So that being said, the first thing that I do when I come in here always is go ahead and create my catalogs. So catalogs are these things, right? Where it says workspace system samples. These are catalogs. I set up three catalogs to start with, and they're your basic medallion architecture catalogs. So we're going to click on new. And we're going to just click on query. We're going to do this really simply. It's going to come up with a SQL editor. It says, welcome to the new SQL editor. You can learn more if you want. I'm going to say, got it. I like to go ahead and expand my catalog view here. These commands are really simple. Create catalog. And as you see, as I type, it will predict what I want to type. So if it thinks it knows, then it's going to go ahead and auto populate that you could hit tab to go through the AI assistant in Databricks is called genie. It's I think it recently has been updated to assistant. It's great. Use it if you want. I really like it. So create catalog. We're going to create our bronze dev because this is a development environment. We're going to create our silver dev and we're going to create our gold dev. You see in that last one, it kind of where I was going and it's going to predict a couple of different things that it might, that you might want. I don't like the default schemas. I generally in my bronze dev will create schemas according to that source data set. So we could hit run all it's going to go ahead and connect to our serverless starter warehouse. We're going to start attach and run. I always hit allow to show notifications here. The first time you run it, in a new browser window, then it's going to ask you for, to just confirm that you're okay with that. Just like any other place that sends you alerts. So it sends you alerts basically when you're, if you click off of here and when your query or your notebooks done running. So now you see, we have our bronze dev, gold dev, and silver dev. Everything comes default with default and information schema. So those are the big things. Set up your catalogs. There's a bunch of stuff in here. You could go to jobs and pipelines. You go to ingestion pipeline. So in ingestion pipeline, these connectors that are available here are called when you create a pipeline this way, 
they're called lake flow connect pipelines. And that is because they have some preset connectors. So these Databricks connectors are the ones that are, I'm referring to here. You also have some Fivetran connectors. Fivetran is a different system, but it's built into Databricks and you could use their connectors as well. There's a handful here. Know that Databricks is always coming out with new ones. I know for a fact right now that they're working on a JIRA connector. So for those of you out there in a business situation where you're needing to pull data from JIRA, that's something that's in private preview right now with Databricks. And so that's something that's coming down the road probably really soon. So be excited about that. There's also a Dynamics 365, which is another pain point for a lot of people, Dynamics 365 connector. So super excited about those connectors as they continue to come out. But these all make it very simple to create your connections. It is all click and point and click for Salesforce. You're going in, you're logging into your Salesforce environment. As long as that login has access, again, you should be sure that you're, you're using a service principle. So kind of a general shared account for that Salesforce connection when you're creating your pipelines in a business environment. But, but once you do, and that that user, that service principal has access to those objects, then it's all just click and check. These are the tables that are objects that I want to import. These are the fields from that object. You could even enforce schema drift and all that. So super, super cool. Be sure you go through and check that out. I have some other videos specifically on how to create those pipelines. Okay. So the other thing that people get hung up on is. I've been told that you can't create a Delta Live table in Databricks free edition. Here's the thing you can keep in mind when you're in Databricks, and this is something that a lot of beginners don't think about, but when you're in Databricks and you, for example, create a new notebook, if there is a library that is not included by default, you're going to have to do a pip install and you could use the percent key. The percent key is called a magic key in Databricks and you use percent pip install, and you could do things like install DuckDB, polars, and various other libraries that you need that may not already be included. The PI MS SQL is a common one. There's a handful out there. So we could do DuckDB, but th that being said, DLT, you could import DLT. Don't import DLT because this is not where you do it. And that's where a lot of people create your Delta live tables, which currently are called <laughs> Lake flow declarative pipelines. You can do pip install.db again, first time you run it, it's going to connect to your and spin up your cluster. You'll see that it very quickly connected because we just ran those SQL queries, but you'll see that it'll go through and just like normal, it's going to install that library. Keep in mind that if you do this in a serverless notebook cluster, you're going to have to not only do the install, but you're also going to have to restart Python before you use that library. That's so that it restarts py Python. And then that Python environment has that library in it to be able to be used. If I were to do this and do import duck TV, there's a chance it'll take fine, but there's a chance that it's going to tell me that it's not there yet. So if there's a pause in between, then like there just was, it may catch it. And if not, you may have to do the restart. Restart is always safer. Now, that being said, there's a couple other things that I want you to set up when you first get into your environment. One of those is your GitHub repo. So if you have a GitHub repo, be sure that you connect it to your Databricks free edition so that you're building your portfolio out on GitHub. And do you do that? in our settings here and he'll come through here and you could do various things. Linked accounts is where we're wanting to be right now. And you'll see the Git integration. So we're going to add our Git credential <coughs> and you'll see the provider. We're going to stay at GitHub, but there's definitely other options. If you're using Azure ADO, Azure DevOps, then you could change to that or whichever AWS code commit, whichever repo environment that you're using. A lot of people use GitHub. So nickname, we're going to call it ample beta, like spaces, we're going to use underscores and we're going to, you could use link GitHub account or you could use a PAT, personal access token. 
I like the personal access token. So in Git, you're going to go to settings and from settings, you're going to come down to developer at the very bottom is developer settings. And from here, we're going to go to personal access tokens. You could use fine grain tokens or tokens classic. I generally use tokens classic. We're going to hit generate new token. We're going to name our token. I'm just going to call it Databricks Gamble Demo. You give it a description, especially if you're in a corporate environment, I would definitely give it a description. Our resource owner, you could choose your resource owner, choose an expiration date, or you could choose no expiration. Again, from a secure environment, be sure that you're choosing, you know, like 60, 90 days. I choose no expiration for my demo stuff again, so that it doesn't expire and I don't have to worry about it, but in a real environment, be sure that you choose something shorter just from a security standpoint. So we're going to choose public repositories because we don't want all repositories and we're going to generate token. Now, as it says, be sure you copy your PAT now so that so that you have it because you're not gonna be able to see it again. Once you do this, it's, it's gone, right? So come back here, paste it in there, hit save and uh, say never. And there we go. Now our gets in there. All right. So our next step is that we need the repo that we're going to connect. So we need to grab this repo that I've created called gamble demo dev. We need that link. And from when you're in your Databricks free edition. You're going to go to new more and get folder. We're going to put that repository name there with the full link. Obviously our Git provider is going to be GitHub. We could name the folder something different if we want, but it'll automatically populate based on the actual repo name. And then we hit create, hit create Git folder, and it's going to create our connection to our Git folder in here so that when we're here. Then we see our actual Git folder. Now, this way you're saving stuff directly to your Git. It's version controlled, all that cool stuff. So you could create a new notebook. You could do things like, you know, query your database. You could choose different things here. Markdown's important for note taking, titles, sectioning your notebook, things like that. So yeah. demo notebook, right? Show a couple pounds and the front here and we'll see that for those of you that might be interested in a full video on various markdown methods let me know but there's some basic understanding so you see it's a little bit smaller the more pounds that you put in here but if you're actually interested then let me know and i'll do a full video but we'll stick with one and it's going to be big right and then you just hover over here hit code You'd add, when you hit text, it automatically changes it to markdown. You'd use assistant, right? Um, so we're just saying, create a list of imports I might need to import from an external API database data source. And so it will automatically import, you know, give you a list request JSON, your data frame for your park seat, you know, PySpark and a handful of different structure types, right? From your SQL dot types and you could accept, or you could reject. You know, so, so it's, again, the assistant's pretty cool. If you want to use the assistant to play around, then that's there. The other cool thing that I want to show you is that you could drag, even drag your different code blocks. Important to be able to know that as well. Um, there, I have videos on widgets already, so be sure you check that out. 